see your text. Uh, I mean, I see your message. Good morning. Good morning, Abhinash. Okay, just wanted to share uh, a couple of verses and then we'll pray. Um, uh, this is something that I shared yesterday with the other class. So, First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Paul writes uh, to Timothy and he gives some instructions and he says, um, you know, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Uh, till I come, give, a, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Um, verse 14, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. In verse 15, meditate on these things and give yourselves, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Um, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Right? So some instructions um, that he gives uh, Timothy, um, who is in Ephesus and who's overseeing um uh, you know, the church uh, in Ephesus, and uh, he has people who are older than him, younger than him. And uh, so um, here, uh, here's Timothy, much experienced. <clears throat> uh, here's uh, Paul, much experienced in ministry, and um, he's uh, giving this instruction to the one who is, uh, you know, just probably starting off, right? Um, so he's saying, let no one despise your youth, uh, how inexperienced or how young you are, uh, but be an example to the believers, right? So for the first thing he says is your life example. Be an example to the believer. And he lists down, you know, in word, in conduct, etc. In verse 13, he says, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, right? So he's talking about the word. He's talking about instruction. He's, he's talking about doctrine. Um, so he's saying, you know, First was life example. Second one is um, give attention to the word, give attention to the teaching, the doctrine. Uh, in verse 14, he says, uh, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the uh, eldership. So next he's, he's talking about um, the, the work of the spirit, right? So we saw life example, we saw doctrine, uh, then he's talking about the work of the Spirit. So don't neglect that. Uh, do not neglect the gift that is in you. The Holy Spirit has imparted. Um, so don't neglect that. Then he goes on to say, meditate on these things, all these things that I'm, you know, uh, think deeply about it. Um, let it be part of your thinking. Let it occupy your mind, your thoughts. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. You know, give yourself wholeheartedly. Don't hold back. Give yourself entirely. So he's talking about life example. He's talking about teaching and doctrine. Uh, uh, he's talking about the work of the Spirit, uh, the gifts of the Spirit uh, in, in his life. And he's saying, meditate on these things. Think about these things. Um, give yourself entirely to them. I, uh, let there be no reservation. Don't hold back. Give yourself completely. So when you do that, it says, um, your progress will be evident. So in, uh, two things, right? The, uh, when you do this, there will be progress. That's something that he's stating there, that your progress uh, will be evident. So there will be progress, and this progress will be something that will be evident, something that will be seen, to all, you know, it's it's not something that is uh, that you notice, but this progress will be noticeable uh, to everyone, you know, everyone that you interact with, to the ones who are to whom you are giving spiritual oversight, um, leadership, right? So it will be evident to all. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to submit that to us um, to really pray on these lines and saying, God. You know, um, let me do these things that, you know, that we can put to practice, apply in our own lives, our life example, the teaching, exhortation, doctrine uh, of the word of God, and then the gifts of the spirit, the work of the spirit, that our lives will be open to it, 
and whatever he has poured out into our hearts that we will not neglect it that we will you know uh, we will walk in it that we will use it and that we will give ourselves entirely wholeheartedly you know to these things and there will be progress right especially for those of us who are thinking oh i you know i seem to have hit a plateau i seem to have hit a uh, hit a rock you know hit a ceiling um you know paul encourages us uh and god encourages us through these words uh give yourself entirely meditate on these things give yourself entirely to these things um entirely to them so that your progress may be evident there will be progress and it will be noticeable progress that will be evident to yourself and to all right so let's pray father we we just want to thank you lord for these um, exhortations from scripture for these instructions which are lord by your spirit and we thank you lord that they are applicable today for us as it was in those days to timothy and lord we we just receive it lord yes lord whether it's our life example or the attention to the study of your word um the meditation of your word uh and the work of your spirit lord and uh, our willingness to yield to the work of the spirit lord our our heart to desire the work of the spirit or for you it's very clear that we need to first you love and desire spiritual gifts so uh, for us to be desiring it always and also god that that we will give ourselves wholeheartedly unreservedly to these things god that our progress will be evident that there will be progress spiritual construction and spiritual progress lord um in our lives god and uh, it will be evident it will be manifest and put on display for all so that your name be glorified so that others are edified as well yes father god we just want to give you thanks that that you're able to do this and i pray for each and every one here god in class and i just pray this over their lives uh um, pray with us over myself that our progress will be evident to all even as we give ourselves wholeheartedly and i just pray god that whatever their whatever blocks are there whatever barriers are there let them be removed in the name of our lord and savior jesus let them be removed in jesus name whatever emotional barriers are let them be removed in jesus name uh whatever be the works of the enemy whatever be the deception of the enemy let it be cleared out in the name of our lord jesus and yes lord to you be all the glory and honor and praise in jesus matchless name we pray amen okay okay so last class we were looking at um uh how leadership involves people and how um we as uh, as leaders or you know potential leaders um there's no running away from people right uh, we can't look at at people as problems we can't look at people as uh, a, you know um as irritations um but really ministry is about people and god wants us or he wants to use us to bless people god wants to move in us and through us you know causing us to be spokespersons right so whom do you speak to yeah of course we will declare to mountains and go through rivers and 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 so on but uh, ultimately it comes down to people whom the lord considers very dear to his heart right for whom he gave himself on the cross so for us to have that perspective is very very important so last class um we looked at uh, how we can uh, get ourselves ready to res- uh, to relate to people right and uh, uh, we were looking at um, uh, john c maxwell's uh, resource winning with people and uh, uh, and we looked at a few things there uh, we, uh, we looked at the lens principle and uh, i think we we closed with that right so so today we'll uh, we'll look at a few more uh, principles that john c maxwell talks about so uh, and then we will you know we will kind of uh, take some time to evaluate ourselves right evaluate and see where we stand right with regard to um uh, I mean, these principles these truths and um, and make changes wherever we need to be 
right? Where and these small decisions that we make about ourselves uh, will go a long way, right? Because we uh, these decisions we make, we of course, obviously, we inv- involve God in it. We invite the power of the Holy Spirit in our decisions, and the Lord takes this up very seriously, right? So um, it it is with all sincerity of heart, and we want to do it so that. We can relate well with people, relate in a healthy manner with people, right? Okay, so um, so I just want to continue the, where we stopped off with the video. And so we will watch the video for about uh, maybe uh, maybe five or I mean, maybe 10 minutes or so. And then we will stop and then evaluate certain things and then continue, right? So I just want us to uh, like be attentive and... Uh, yeah, let's watch this video. Let me just share the screen and we'll watch it. Yeah. Just a minute, please. Okay. The mirror principle. Following in your notes, he's talking about the mirror principle, which is also there, so you can follow with that. Um, But let's watch this. I'm going to turn my camera off so that there's no buffering issues. Okay. The mirror principle says... The first person we must examine is ourselves. And coping with difficult people, I love this quote, coping with difficult people is always a problem, especially if the difficult person happens to be you. The question I must ask myself, have I examined myself and taken responsibility for who I am? Here's how the mirror test works. People unaware of who they are and what they do often damage relationships with others. The way to change that is to look in the mirror. It is something all of us must do. It's what I call taking the mirror test. Consider these truths that we must learn about ourselves. Number one, the first person I must know is myself. That speaks of our self-awareness. Human nature seems to endow people with the ability to size up everybody in the world but themselves. That is so true. As I have worked and talked and counseled with people, they're a much better evaluator of others than they are of themselves. Because, you see, we judge others by their actions and we judge ourselves by our motives. We know what we intend to do, what we would want to do, what we feel and what we would like to have done. Number two, the first person I must get along with is myself. This deals with my self-image. Sidney Harris observed, if you're not comfortable with yourself, you can't be comfortable with others. I would take that one step farther. If you do not believe in yourself, you will sabotage relationships. Most of you are aware, because I wrote the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, that I talk about the law of the lid. The law of the lid basically says that if this hand is my leadership skill, then this lid, this leadership skill and effectiveness will determine uh, how I can grow my organization or how I can develop my department, etc. That there's a lid, a leadership lid that keeps us from expanding or growing. I would just stop and say to you, that's true about relationships also. There's a relationship lid that keeps us from expanding and growing in our knowledge and understanding and connection with and relationship with others. And it deals with this right here. If you can't get along with yourself, if you have a poor self-image, I can promise you, you'll never get along with a lot of people and you'll never be able to believe in them because you don't believe in yourself. Number three, the first person to cause me problems is myself. That's self-honesty. Or as comedian Jack Parr quipped, 
Looking back, my life seems like one big obstacle race with me being the chief obstacle. I did a, a tape one time, a leadership tape, entitled How to Get Out of Your Own Way. And basically, the thesis of the tape was don't worry about competition. Most people never get sidetracked with competition or beat up by competition. They just blow themselves up. Most people, if you just let them alone, it's only a matter of time till they go into the ditch. We can't even run a race sometimes with ourselves because of the self-image, because of this whole process of the mere principle and unable to cope with who we really are. Number four, the first person I must change is myself. This deals with self-improvement. In the crypts of Westminster Abbey, the following words were written on the tomb of an Anglican bishop who lived in the 11th century. When I was young and free, my imagination had no limits, and I dreamed of changing the world. As I grew older and wiser, I discovered the world would not change, so I shortened my sights somewhat and decided to change only my country. But it too seemed immovable. As I grew in my twilight years, in one last desperate attempt, I settled for changing only my family, those closest to me. But alas, they would have none of it. And now as I lie on my deathbed, I suddenly realized if I had only changed myself first, then by example, I would have changed my family and from their inspiration and encouragement, I would have been able to better my country and who knows, I may have even changed my world. Number five, the first person that can make a difference is myself. This deals with self-responsibility. In the 17 Indisputable Laws of Teamwork, I wrote about the law of significance, that one is too small of a number to achieve greatness. I truly believe that no significant accomplishment can be achieved by individual effort. However, I also believe that every significant accomplishment begins with the vision of one individual. That person not only possesses the vision, but also takes responsibility for carrying it out to others. If you want to make a difference in this world, you must take responsibility for yourself. A couple of years ago, I was in, um, going to Australia to speak at a conference, and Margaret and I stopped for a couple of days at Christchurch, New Zealand. Beautiful country. The first morning that when we got up at our hotel, Margaret and I both loved Diet Coke in the morning to kind of get that caffeine, get that blood flowing for you. And so I, I went on a search to find some Diet Coke, which I couldn't find any Diet Coke and couldn't find any ice. And I'm wandering the halls, and I see this door, this door that basically says staff only. And, me being the kind of person I am, I assume that back there is the ice and back there probably is some diet cola and I raised my right hand, made myself a staff member and entered the door <laughs> and uh, looked around and, and there was no Diet Coke, there was no ice. I'm about to leave this little area that was for staff only and I look at the door that I'm about to open to, to walk out and there's a full length mirror. And at the, at the top of the full length mirror, it had these words. Take a good look at yourself. What you see, the customer is about to see. And as I looked at that little mirror and I saw those words, I said to myself, every day I would like to tell people, before you go out into the world, look in the mirror. Take a good look at yourself. Because who you are is how you'll see others. What you represent by your actions by your face is going to have a lot to determine on how well you relate to people. Now, a lot of times, people, when they look in the mirror, they don't want to face reality. They're like the guy with a health problem. And he says, Doc, could you just touch up the x-rays? Could you just kind of work on those a little bit? It's, it's not an x-ray issue. It's something that you and I have to do as we look in the mirror. People principle number three. The pain principle. The pain principle says hurting people hurt people and are easily hurt by them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> some good stuff there, you know, to 
to evaluate ourselves um, about self awareness, about um, you know, getting along with ourselves. So I just want us to, you know, uh, take a good look at at ourselves and evalu evaluate ourselves um, to see. Uh, okay, first thing that we can do is, uh, yeah, maybe take some time to see. Okay, what what are our strengths right now? Okay. Putting it in the chat. What are our strengths, or what is my? Maybe we should just personalize it. What are my strengths, right? Okay. What are my strengths? Second one. Um, what are my? I'm not going to say weakness, but I'm. What are my areas of growth, right? So. What do I perceive? What I perceive about myself as okay. This needs to change. This needs to improve. This needs to grow. Okay, so it could be uh, in the area of skill. It could be in the area of uh, maybe um, character. It could be in the area of uh, you know whatever you know about yourself. You look at it. Maybe you can you can uh, for for the, for just to help us. It could be in the area of skills, ability. Um, you know, knowledge. I just group them, group them as one category: knowledge, um, um, learning. Okay, or it could be in the area of uh, character. Okay, um, maybe temperament. It could be in the area of uh, yeah, uh, maybe habits. Lifestyle, okay. Um, it could be in the area of uh, relationships. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess it will come into the second category, but uh, you get the idea, right? So uh, let's just take an honest um, look at ourselves and see, you know, what are those? What are those strengths? Right? What are those areas that? Uh, well, they don't seem to be strengths right now, but they can be. Right, they can be made strong, and uh, and certain things are maybe maybe not there at all, right? Uh, and this is something that you don't have to share with others. So we're not. I'm not going to ask us to, you know, share or uh, with the class or or even to, you know, uh, speak out about it. No, but uh, but it's important for us to to know this. It's important for us to write down, right? Be honest with ourselves. To be honest with God. And say yes, Lord. I just see that this is a problem, right? This is something that uh, that needs change, and I see this as an area of strength. Uh, praise God for that. I thank you, right? So you thank God for the area of strength, and and pray and ask God for those things that you see as uh, as weaknesses, uh, as areas of growth, right? So we're going to take about five minutes to do that, and then we will we will get back and continue.
So how does it look? Like, does it look good, bad, ugly? <laughs> you know, the um, the intention is not for us to feel bad at the end of the day, but to really. Um, oops. Okay. Well, the intention is for us uh, not to feel bad uh, about ourselves, but really to have an honest look, uh, be real and authentic about this, so that um, there can be change. You know, we can invite change uh, into our lives. Right. So, um, it's it's important uh, that we see ourselves uh, for who we are, and here's the best part: we see ourselves as. Uh, uh, as ones who are washed by the blood of Jesus, as ones who have a new identity. Okay, so so this is where, like, when we look at areas of improvement, when we look at uh, you know things that are not really uh, happening the way it should be, uh, it doesn't have to stop there, right? It doesn't have to stop there because um, in your spirit, you, we are born again. We are uh, new creations. We have a new identity. Uh, we have the overcoming power within us. And we are moving from glory to glory. We are moving from strength to strength. Right? Um, okay. So Sam asks a question. What about our blind spots? Okay. So what are things that, um, you know, that uh, we are completely blind to ourselves? Right? Um, uh uh, you know, we, we are not aware of it. It comes sometimes. It's it's an embarrassment. It just you know, it, probably in public, probably in you know, in a situation, it pop pops up, and then uh, we completely uh, we are blindsided. We are we are completely taken by a surprise. So, what about our blind spots? You know, the one who can reveal our blind spots is the Holy Spirit. Right, so that's the advantage, you know. Rather than going to uh, another person, of course, another person would also, you know, uh, a friend, uh, someone who understands, someone who knows and wants the best for us, can also, uh, you know, make us aware of our blind spots, right? And say, okay, uh, when we say blind spots, we are looking at, you know, some some things that need change in us, some things that needs to be improved in us, and which we are not aware of ourselves. Maybe we look, you know, maybe it's a problem, you know, it's uh, it's something that we say, something that we do, and uh, we don't even realize it, but maybe we are hurting people, maybe we are hurting ourselves, and that is actually stopping our progress, right? So, um, so that is what we mean by, you know, blind spot, something that we don't, uh, you know, see uh, in ourselves, right? So, um, well, we could, we could always uh, have a friend, a mentor, uh, or someone whom we hold in high regard, who can give us a objective, uh, you know, uh, uh, an objective uh, who can observe and, and give us um, a, a very uh, objective response. Okay, this is the problem. Um, and over and above that, we you know we have God, the Holy Spirit, who indwells us and who quickens the word to us. You know, as we look at the mirror. You know, when we look at the book of James, we see that um, the word of God is referred to as the mirror. Right? Let me just read that uh, scripture. Um, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, like this is James 1 verse 23, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. You know, So, um, right. so when we um, read the word of God, when we look into the word of God, when the Holy Spirit shows, reveals us for who we are, you know, uh, he shows us even our hidden, hidden weaknesses. You know, things that we do not know about ourselves, and things that we need to change about ourselves. Okay, another 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 thing um, that we um, or another resource um, that we have is uh, the gift of praying in tongues. When we pray in the spirit, there is edification. Right, there is change. There is edification. We are being built up in the inner man right? and uh, we see um, that 
when we pray in tongues, you know, sometimes we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, right? And sometimes we completely, because we don't know, hey, this is a problem with me. I don't, I don't know it at all. You know, it's not come to my awareness. Um, but when I pray in the Spirit, when we pray in tongues, uh, the Holy Spirit who knows us uh, inside out, you know, He enables us to pray that perfect prayer and to bring about change, even in those hidden areas, right? Okay. Yeah, so um, so some of the, you know, some other questions to, I, ho I hope that helps, Sam. Eh? Uh, so, um, some other... Yes, yes, Master. Awesome. Right. Thank you right, so much. Right. So some of the questions to ask ourselves is, uh, you know, uh, would I hire myself, you know, if yes, for what reason? If you if you're running a business, if you or if you're starting out a ministry and you need help in certain area, would you hire yourself uh, for if it's yes, you know what are those reasons for which you will hire yourself? If it's not, you know what are those reasons again? Uh, another question to reflect and ask ourselves: that What what problems have I cre created for myself for myself in the past? Or maybe even right now, what are the some things that I've created my, for myself, and uh, uh, and then these are things to you know for which we can get some real answers. But the the thing is not to stop there, you know? uh, not to stop there. Many times when we when we just reflect, we get stuck because we are just in a downward spiral of looking at uh, the 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 flesh aspect of it, the unrenewed aspect of our lives, and we just stuck there. But we know that we can go beyond that because of who we are on the inside, right? Because of who we, we have become um, uh, on the inside. Yes, that change needs to come, that, uh, you know, we need to renew our mind, our thinking for it to be part of our life, for the, for the choices that we need to make, for our lifestyle and behavior and everything to change. We, we, we need to, you know, uh, express the, the that inward change uh, through our senses, right? Through our through our emotions, through our uh, thinking, through our words, our actions, and that would come only when we renew our mind to the truth of who we are, right? So that's the second part of it, okay? Okay, let's um, uh, let, let's move on. So we looked at what is the you know, mirror principle that will actually help us to, uh, to be aware, and as we have uh, uh, honest look of, uh, look about ourselves and um, and also uh, you know change things about us right change certain things about us um, and it, we know that it's going to be a work in progress but as long as we are committed to that that work in progress committed to that process of saying god you know as you lead as you as you prompt as you show you know i'm going to be changing there, there is going to be continuous renewal and and praise god for that right he is he is there to to lead to lead us from one level of strength to another level of strength so um, he is doing that and he is bringing about change in us from one level to another level so as long as we commit to following him commit to obeying him we know that you know that's going to be a journey that we need to uh, make and it's, it is a process okay uh, I'm just going to share the notes uh, to look at uh, the next principle, which is um, the pain principle. Right? Okay. The pain uh, principle. So basically, it's uh, it is we know that it is common knowledge that those who hurt or who are hurting hurt others, right? Because they are dealing with the pain themselves, and uh, those who are hurting hurt others, or as someone said, hurt people hurt people. Right? You are hurt, and you are still nursing that hurt, and uh, and because of that, you hurt others as well. Okay, and um, you know, I, I the the our response to maybe a, a small issue uh, could be, you know, sometimes it's not in proportion to that. You know the, the smallness of it, and sometimes we realize, you know, why did I react that way? Why did I respond that way? Uh, and it could be because of unresolved hurt, right? Because we've not resolved it, or we are irritated about something, and our response to that 
to the discomfort or to the to the you know the environment the surrounding is it's it's not in proportion or that to that problem is not in proportion and we realize it's because it's coming from that place of hurt right so uh, the pain principle is important so if we are not walking healthy right if we have not gone before god in on honesty or not going before god before the lord in an ongoing manner uh to deal with the hurts to deal with the dip- disappointments the regrets and be set free uh you know we that is going to come in the way of us relating to people you know um i i remember you know when 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 our daughter was uh, a toddler and uh, uh and daughter was a toddler and then you know she would have just played with the toys and you know the whole living room would be full of uh, toys you know this strewn everywhere and she would have been just playing with stuff um she was too too uh, young to just you know arrange it etc but then uh, and i remember walking into uh, the house after you know a day at the office and uh, you know as you all know i've shared and you know, i used to be in the sales job in a high pressure uh, target targets all the time and just walking to the house and and i remember you know if if i'm irritated about something right uh, i remember my reaction my response to that would be you know even if there was one thing which was out of place you know I, that would just uh, get me that would really get me you know upset irritated and if they, even if there was you know and so you can imagine the scene when you know the toys all over the floor and i just come in and and just get so bothered so upset and i'll come in you know just picking up the toys <laughs> i've not even taken my toy or tie off or my you know bag off but i'll be i'll be just coming in right from the door picking up the toys picking up and putting them in you know cuz it's just uh, getting to me right and uh, and uh, and i remember when things were okay or internally when i was at peace and uh, i was you know much better uh or, or not really shaken by you know not really um uh, under or not really under pressure or things were okay then even if you know the whole house was upside down i was fine right so the so one thing i looking back i understood was it it was actually about me right um the way i related to things i i would you know i would probably look at it in a very positive manner and say oh hey this things need change and then go rearrange it and and do it with a smile but if uh, i was hurting myself if i was under pressure myself and things were not okay then i would walk into a place and uh, in my house and even if something small was out of place it would just upset me you know throw me out of balance and then i then i realized that hey, uh, it it need not be so it cannot be so right so you when you think of unresolved issues from the past okay uh, maybe the way uh, maybe the way uh, or some of the things that people said you know, spoke to you they said to you or some of the labels that people put on you okay or oh, he is always like this you know many times growing up um interacting with children you know at that age uh, they make a lot of statements a lot of comments about our physical appearance right uh to start with physical appearance you know uh maybe if you're fat you're called a fatty if you're thin you're called you know something uh maybe the color of your skin maybe uh you know maybe you started wearing you know spectacles glasses at a very young age and then they call you four eyes or several things right and and some of those labels stick and let's say you know years after years after many years uh, maybe decades after you know that and if somebody picks on that or somebody you know uh, says that and if you know calls us by that or maybe someone on the road and uh, maybe in traffic you did something and then someone responded in anger calling you a name or putting a label then you know you your response to it is is uh, you know so much bigger right you're not able to leave that because 
there's something which is there right from you know from an young age, young age you know you're not, you've not let go of that label right you've been reminded of that and you're just holding on to that okay so the thing is this that um, you know as leaders and as you know as a human being as believers um, god wants us to be healthy and praise god that in him you know we are set free the truth sets us free right and and praise god that the holy spirit leads us into all truth and uh, and we and we read that uh, where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the, the the freedom that we experience the manifest liberty that we experience in our spirit you know at times is 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 just uh, a proof a tangible proof of the presence of the spirit of the lord and his work and his ministry in our lives right so um so uh, when we look at uh, you know maybe uh, ourselves getting ourselves ready to interact with people and uh, uh, and and be good at that you know we need to look at this as well that um, the pain um that we feel or pain that we uh, um we have not dealt with um you know, we need to you know it will come in the way and it can come at sometimes uh, and it can be embarrassing so we need to you know deal with that uh, in the right manner right and we can deal with it and we can overcome and walk in freedom okay so you know 3 john um chapter 1 verse 2 we we've looked at it in financial you know stewardship class uh, is talking about prosperity and and linking that with uh, the prosperity of our soul you know thriving the flourishing of our soul meaning our our thoughts our mind our will our emotions our imaginations everything right so his prayer is that beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things just as your your soul prospers Right? that you may prosper in all things uh, just as your soul prospers so your soul your imagination is your thoughts um, you know how is it right now you know are you dealing with some recurring cyclical oppressive thoughts over and over again you know, right from the time you wake up right uh, are, are these thoughts bothering you know are they oppressive um, you can be set free right and uh, we we are called to walk in freedom right um and the truth will set us free okay so it depends on what we are filling our minds with you know just an aside right um what we are filling our minds with the things that we look the things that we watch the things that we read the things that we are listening to uh what are, what are we filling our minds with right uh, so it um, it's very important um yes we we want to be aware of things that are going on in the world and you know news and information and uh, and all that newspaper and media and all that is it's it's good but over and above that we need to come back um uh, to what god wants to uh, do with our soul and uh, he he wants to restore our soul right and uh, when we interact with the world when we open our lives to uh you know what is happening in the world um and we we do get affected by what we see you know we we do get challenged by what we see uh, and it's a good thing right we do get affected in the sense we get upset about injustice uh we get we get angry about some things that are unrighteous and things that are happening we get sad um uh, by looking at some of the uh you know inequalities that are there in the world because it's fallen right we get upset and and these are all good uh, and we are created that way but we need to get back to a place of health uh with regarding i mean regarding our soul so that we can respond in the right manner right and not from a place of hurt and not from a place of you know even guilt or condemnation right but from a place of from a place of health okay so um uh 147 psalm 147 and verse 3 he heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds right he heals the broken hearted who heals the lord heals and he binds up their wounds um so god can god does god will heal our hearts as we open up uh, our lives to him 
right? So uh, the same happens when we are dealing with others, you know, understand that, you know, even as we have gone through this and even as we are in the process of uh, over being over, uh, I mean, uh, overcoming, you know, these matters of the soul and uh, understand that we are dealing with others who are hurt as well, okay? Um, so maybe certain personal remarks, maybe, um, you know, certain things that, um, that people say and comment, um, we need to understand, right? Sometimes it just takes us by surprise. Why is that person saying that? You know, maybe it's about another person. Why? Um, you know, and uh, in, the, in the course of a conversation, why are they so upset? You, know, you see it and it's it's nothing. But for them, you know, there is something beyond that issue. So uh, we are able to look at it objectively. We are able to, you know, look beyond their response and uh, uh, look through those emotions, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's the pain principle that that would help us uh, to under uh, when we understand this principle, right? It uh, helps us to relate to people in a better way, right? Okay. We'll stop here, take a break, and then um, and then get back.